Hey y'all, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Robin and today I have some book recommendations for you. We are nearing the end of the year and we're all trying to make our reading goals for the year and hit those numbers. And you know, the best way to do that, read short books. Sometimes you just need to sneak in like a short book. You know what I mean? Something under 300 pages and that's what I have for you guys. Obviously you always have comic books and manga to like look at if you wanted to go that route but these are all books that are under 300 pages and there's 10 of them and so let's get into it. This is in no kind of order, no genre order, page count number, there's no order so we're just gonna get into what the books are. First on my list I have Annihilation by Jeff Vandermeer comes in at about 208 pages. Obviously all of these things depend on the edition that you have. This is about 208 pages. This is the first in the Southern Reach trilogy and it is about four women who have expertise in different areas who are sent out to observe this um, isolated area called Area X. It's apart from civilization and like weird things happen in this area. People disappear. There's like new kind of growths um, and no one really comes out of this area unscathed. Every exploration, people go in trying to figure out what's going on in this area. Why is this particular thing like this? And what's happening to the people while they're in there? I loved this book when I read it. Um, it is one of the weirdest books that I've ever read. Um, and I don't know whether it's because it's like science fiction and sometimes science fiction just makes me feel a little dumb because like science. But um, I was a little confused reading it. But I still had a good time. Just seeing the women try to work together or kind of tear each other apart to survive this area. And it's not like they were tearing each other apart because like, because they were assholes. Something in this area is like doing something to them and they have to figure out what it is so that they can come out alive because not everyone makes it. And the people that do make it, well, Sorry to those people as well. But it was a wild ride for sure from beginning to end. I don't know that I would recommend the entire series. For me, book two was a little meh, but book three was better. But Annihilation, definitely I would recommend. Next, I have The Deep by River Solomon coming in at 192 pages. This is about an underwater society made up of mer people the descendants of slaves that were thrown overboard slave ships on the crossing between Africa and the Americas um, during the slave trade. We're following one mer person in particular, Yetu. She is the historian. She carries all of the memories of descendants past, all of the traumatic things that have happened. And once a year, all of the people come together and they are given the memories so that they too can remember like what happened to them, how they ended up under the sea. And, but then after that moment there, all the memories are given back to Yetu and she kind of has to carry the burden of all of these very emotional and traumatic experiences of her people. You're following her as she, as it's time for their annual, I think it happens annually, their annual memory time. And she kind of just is like, I'm tired of this. I want to give the memories up and like never get them back. And so you're following her during that time, as well as like how she became the historian, other historians in the past. And as she befriends a two-legged person and how she has to overcome knowing what she knows about two-legged people and what they've done to her people. But even though she's befriending this two-legged person, that does not mean that all is well for her people because there's something that they will have to face soon and you gotta read it to find out what. Next on the list, we have The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe by C.S. Lewis. It is part of the Chronicles of Narnia series. This is about four siblings who are staying with um, an uncle or a family friend during wartime in like the 1940s. 
One day they're playing hide and seek in the house and the youngest sibling, Lucy, she hides in a wardrobe. And as she's hiding, she's like pushing past all these fur coats and she makes her way into this magical world of Narnia where she makes friends with Mr. Tumnus, who is a fawn. And she's having a jolly old time with Mr. Tumnus and she comes back and she's trying to tell her siblings like, hey, I found this new place and it's magical and wonderful. And her siblings are like, uh, are you okay? Are you okay? Her brother Edmund is making fun of her the most because he's a jerk. They go on about their lives or whatever. And then they're playing again and Edmund is the one who stumbles upon Narnia this time, except this time he meets someone who's not so great and who tricks him into bringing his siblings into Narnia so that she can use them for her own good. It's quite an adventure. It's great for the winter time. It's very atmospheric. It's super cold in Narnia, not my favorite type of thing, but it's such a fun little story a very fast read, recommend. Next is Sing Unburied Sing by Jasmine Ward. This is coming in at 285 pages. It is a fictional family novel focusing on Jojo, who is a biracial teen who's kind of mostly raising his little sister because his father is in jail and his mother is just so focused on their father that she barely has time to focus on the children. But the children are being raised by their grandparents. One day they're on their way to pick up Jojo's dad from prison and he ends up having these run-ins with spirits and helps them move on while also trying to confront not just his own past but his family's past and the people that have come around them as a family to create these circumstances. It is a slower paced book for sure and you're really focusing more on the characters than you are on the plot but it's a fantastic read. It's beautifully written. I hands down love this book. If you're into like family dramas and relationships, this is a good one. Now one book that is just a little over 300 pages is Pride by Evie Zaboy. It's 304 pages, but like those four pages, do they really count? I'm not counting it. So but Pride is a retelling of Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice. It's told through the t lens of a New York teen whose new neighbors are a little, a little more bougie for the neighborhood. And so she meets them and she starts to form a relationship with the new neighbors, the teen boys that are the new neighbors, and develop a friendship. It's great seeing her try to figure out whether she likes these people because she's heard nothing but like not great things about their kinds of people. And they've also been told not great things about her kind of people, but she introduces them to the neighborhood, to her friends and tries to incorporate them. There's obviously a drama that brews and a little budding relationship that happens. It's cute. It is fun. I enjoy the retelling of this in an urban setting with New York teens. You cannot go wrong. It's such a fast read. And I think I want to say that Elizabeth Acevedo narrates the book. If she narrates it, why would you not listen to it? I mean, you can read it with your eyeballs also fantastic, but I mean, Elizabeth Acevedo, enough said. A novella that I really loved this year was I Think I Might Love You by Christina C. Jones. This is my first time ever reading Christina C. Jones and it was so good. You have Jax who is, more often than not, trouble seems to follow her and she gets into a situation where she has to go to her sister's apartment and she's in there, but so was somebody else who it was not supposed to be. That is Jaden. And so they have a huge blow up in the beginning. They go their separate ways after the disastrous meeting that they have, but they have to come together again. And when I tell you that the relationship that they form is just comical and cute 
and just so good. Jaden and Jax are such great characters and it makes me want to read the rest of the series with the other sisters that they talk about because it was a great story. It was steamy. The comedic timing for Jax was just so good. She's hilarious. She's a hilarious character. I was laughing out loud like actually and not just the ha. Huh. I was actually laughing, cackling at some of the lines. It was fun to watch Jax just continuously have run-ins and Jaden kind of be by her side to see it and either help her or just say like, girl, what's happening? But I love them both as characters. I love this story. Then I have Pet by Akwege Mezi. So this takes place in a place called Lucille, which is a utopia where evil and evil people, which are monsters, no longer exist. Everything is just very fantastic. It's great. Nothing bad happens. But one day Jam, who is a 15 year old transgender girl who only speaks, um, through sign language, except with her mother. I think she's she uses like words with her mom, but who mostly communicates through sign language is comes across what would be a monster hunter. Now monster hunters aren't needed anymore because there are no more monsters. Or so they think. The monster hunter, who's named Pet, tells Jam where the monster can be found. And she's like, why would there be a monster there? So then they start an investigation to kind of figure out where the monster really is, why it's here in this place where monsters no longer exist, and what happens from there. It is kind of a hard story, but it's still a very great story overall. And the fact that there are adults that are listening to children that doesn't happen a whole lot. Normally children are overlooked or thought of being as like just imagining something, but Jam is really listened to in this and I, I appreciate it that it's so easy to be immersed in this world. The characters are compelling. The plot is very interesting. Give it a whirl. It'll take you that long to read. If Beale Street Could Talk by James Baldwin coming in at about 197 pages. James Baldwin is really becoming one of my favorite authors. I love his writing. It's very um, intentional and deliberate and beautiful writing. This is a uh, love story between Fanny and Tish who fall in love in Harlem and they're I want to say like in the 1940s or 50s and they had big dreams for each other for having a family. Fani wants to grow up and be like a sculptor and a painter and Tish is just like that's my man. I'm gonna stick beside him. But things go a little left when Fani is put into jail because he's accused of raping this woman and so Tish is she believes that Fani doesn't didn't do it. She's at the same time that she's trying to help Fani while he's in jail. She's also trying to bring the two families together because she loves him and has these plans for their life together, which includes merging their two families. And so it's their love story kind of seen through flashbacks of what happened, but it's also a little bit tragic because Fani is in prison as he's like waiting for trial to happen. This really shows like the power of love and not just the love between Fani and Tish, but the love of community because there are people that are coming alongside Tish to try to help raise her up and to, while she is trying to keep Fani's spirits up while he is in prison. It is slower paced, so it may take a little bit longer to read, but because it's so short, it doesn't take that much time. Then I have City of Ghost by V.E. Schwab coming in at about 285 pages. This is the first book in the Cassidy Blake series. This is about, I think she's 12. Cassidy, who is 12, she had a near-death experience, and since then she has been able to see ghosts. She can 
cross between the world of the living and the dead as they are parallels to each other. Now, this is interesting because her parents are ghost hunters. Her dad doesn't really believe in ghosts. He's just there for the history of it all. And her mother believes fully in ghosts and is like, history is great too. So she travels with her parents a lot. And currently in this book, they're in Scotland. Along with her sidekick ghost friend, Jacob, she explores different places in Scotland and she like comes across these ghosts. She also meets this other girl, Lara, who has similar abilities to her. And Lara is just very knowledgeable about speaking with ghosts and going beyond the veil, as she calls it, um, into the other realm where spirits live. And so Cassidy is always getting into some sort of situation involving sometimes a malevolent spirit. And so she's trying to help the spirit move from the veil, which is the in-between world, to the great beyond. It is a very fun ride. It is middle grade, so, you know, no time at all. I actually enjoyed the series overall as a whole, and Cassidy is a great character. Jacob is such a good friend. Laura, she has gotten on my nerves because she's such a know-it-all, but she really does know it all, and so I can't fault her for that but it's a fun little story. I would highly suggest reading it if you're into middle grade and we're coming off of like, you know, spooky season. So I feel like it's a good transitional type of book. And then last but not least of this list, because there was no order, rhyme or reason to this, but I have Moon of the Crusted Snow by Wabashig Rice. 213-ish pages. If you want to have creepy, atmospheric, cold, wintry vibes, this is it. This is about an, an Anishinaabe community in Canada. Sorry, words. They were not coming in my head. In Canada. And it's a post-apocalyptic thriller. Something has happened um, in this town and in other towns nearby where there is like no power, no communication source. And the community here is starting to fray a bit because now people are starting to wonder about resources and what are the potential threats if you can't get a hold of people in the outside world. It is in the dead of winter and they've got to survive. And now a larger threat comes in the form of people from outside of the community and what they may do once they understand like who's here, what resources they have. It is not creepy in the sense of like there's a monster looming, but more like people are the monsters. You know what I mean? Because they are. And there's like a mini societal collapse happening. And like, how do you keep that from happening and not have everyone panic about being cut off from the rest of the world? It's a quiet thriller because there's not like a ton of action happening at every moment. It's not like something is continuously happening, but like it's so tense and you're on edge and you just know that at any moment something could pop off and it might. Or it might not. You'll have to read it to find out. But that's what I have for you guys today. If you've read any of these books and liked them, let me know down below. If you're thinking about picking up any of these books, also let me know that down below as well. And until next time, bye.